So we're here at Gamescom. Let's talk about the two newest characters you guys are showing playable here at the show. Uh, yes. Well, um, a few weeks back, we uh, uh, introduced uh, Raiden as as the, the the next character after the E3 show, uh, and then um, we introduced for here uh, Kano. So two returning kind of classic characters, but with this new feature of the three variations of each. And so that's what's really I think people are really starting to get just how how deep this this feature is going to be when every character has three variations and thinking about them. Look, you know kind of uh, matching up against each other with all those permutations and combinations of, uh, of matchups. How do those variations, like for instance, how do you like to play with them, the two new ones? Um, well, with Kano, I, I love the eye laser. I, I've always been a big fan of the eye laser, and at the same time, you know, his knife um, fighting style has a lot of really cool um, uh, extended combos and, and, and really brutal looking uh, moves. but. The, for Kano, it's kind of like the, the the eye laser, and for Raiden, I like the the, the Storm Lord Raiden, where he um, he does the uh, he drops the, uh, the those those uh, kind of bombs in the air that connect, and then you know he kind of owns that space. So that's a really uh, um, uh, to me that's that's the one with a big kind of psychological game against the opponent. Now, in the past, we've seen Mortal Kombat out there on the esports uh, space. How do you feel these new variations will? add to that eSports experience? I think it'll add substantial um, um, additional depth to the game and I, I think that um, you know these are, these are the kind of you know in, in fighting games you know the Evo tournaments all of the, the, the um, they, they, they're always talking about matchups they're always talking about you know how does this char character compare to this one this one's weak against these now you have you know three versions so how does Scorpion A compare to Raiden B compared to Sub-Zero C and the mixture of all that, you know, multiply that by, you know, 30 some characters and you just have a way more um, huge variety of matchups that you wouldn't have in any other fighting game. And you've been making games for a long time. What are your thoughts about how esports seems to have exploded the last few years? Um, I'm, I'm, uh, I, I'm ex I was expecting it in some ways, but still amazed by it. You know, when you see something like a League of Legends, you know, they, they, they take up the entire convention center at uh, LA, LA Live. It's, it's, um, it's, it's unbelievable, you know, like, like, and people just kind of converge. Also going to the Evo uh, show in Las Vegas, is, it's unbelievable. It's, it's just as much energy as a basketball game or a baseball game or something like that. So it's clearly legitimate at this point. How do you feel it impacts you guys as developers knowing that there's now actual people that make a living playing your video games? It's it's um, it's kind of daunting, you know. I think a lot of um, you you really get um, you really get super cautious about making sure that the game is balanced and doesn't have any cheats in it. You know, it's kind of like you know, what if what if you made a basketball hoop that was a little bit wider and one, and one team has it? You know, so you you really want to make sure that everything is as even as possible and um, and and keep it legit because people are kind of putting their livelihood on the line there. You guys are showing a new level when it comes to the jungle. Can you talk about that and also the interactivity that that opens up? Yes, um, every one of our um, environments has some level of interactivity. It usually has to do with um, maneuvering your characters or kind of propelling them forward. The jungle has these vines that hang down that you can jump on and swing like as, as an attack for your, uh, your opponent. There's a big rock on the left side that you can run up and kind of escape from the, uh, from the corner. And there's also a big uh, kind of like statue that you can slam your opponent's head into it. So they, 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 their main function is to kind of like, you know, maneuver yourself around, but there are some attack elements to them as well. And the jungle isn't any different. It just has those elements too. How have you guys been able to push the Unreal Engine technology over the last few games and now bringing it out on next gen? Um, we've actually been modifying the Unreal uh, Engine for for a few years now. I mean, it's it's really, um, it's it's almost become our own kind of uh, proprietary engine at this point because you know we have we're, we're we're two big characters on the screen we're running 60 frames a second our our environments are a lot more enclosed that's a lot different from like a um, 
like a first person shooter or something like that. So we, we have requirements that are specific, tailored to our needs that we've spent years working on. And so it's, it's, we're very comfortable with this engine at this point. When you guys first added it to the equation, how did that open up things not having to start from scratch? Oh, it was a huge uh, advantage because, you know, the, the, the complexities of making a, a graphics engine as, as by, by evidence by the few people who actually are doing it successfully is really hard. And so um, we, at, at first we had a lot of help you know, from Epic, they were really kind of helping us support it. But then at some point, we kind of took it and, and veered off. And, you know, we, we, we stopped taking builds from them. And we kind of veered off into our own uh, kind of version of, the, of that engine.